I'm Lewis Wright, Sunday School Superintendent here at College Hill Missionary Baptist Church. It is my honor to once again have you join us on this beautiful first Sunday morning in this new year of 2021 as we share a summary of the Sunday School lesson with you. Our being here this morning on this first Sunday of this new year is the result of his grace and mercy that he's allowed us to see this new year. And we give all honor and thanks to him for this another opportunity and a privilege of serving him. Our lesson for today is lesson number five, and it is the beginning of a new unit, which is unit two for the winter quarter. The title of this unit is Jesus and Calls in His Ministry. The title of our lesson today is an amazing ministry. Our devotional reading for this lesson is Deuteronomy chapter 8, verses 1 through 11. The background scripture is from Luke chapter 4, and the print passage is from Luke chapter 4, verses 14 through 22a. The key verse reads, The Spirit of the Lord is on me because he has anointed me to proclaim good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim freedom for the prisoners and the recovery of sight for the blind, to set the oppressed free, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor, Luke chapter 4, verses 18 through 19. And this is from the New International Version. In our lesson today, we will be reviewing an account of Jesus beginning his ministry. We know from the scripture that Jesus was baptized by John the Baptist. After his baptism, he went into the wilderness for 40 days for fasting and consecration in preparation for his earthly ministry. His wilderness experience was followed by a period of ministry throughout the region. We can only imagine the popularity, fame, and large crowds that followed him as a result of his remarkable ministry. With Jesus returning home to Galilee, his fame had already made it to his hometown of Nazareth, and everybody wanted to see and hear their hometown boy. Our lesson for today will begin at this point with three outlines we will be reviewing. Outline number one, filled with the power of the Holy Spirit, Luke chapter four, verses 14 and 15. The second outline is, I am the man, Luke chapter four, verses 16 through 19. And the third outline is today, the scripture is fulfilled in your ears, Luke chapter four, verses 20 through 22a. In our first outline, Jesus' return to Galilee was met with excitement and the power and the work of the Holy Spirit was with him. It is recorded that the people were impressed with news of Jesus' miracles. That all changed when they pressed him to perform miracles with them and he refused. His refusal was because of the widespread lack of faith. In our second outline, I am the man, Jesus returned to Nazareth, the town where he grew up. He was accustomed to going into the synagogue to worship on the Sabbath day, which was on Saturday. While the stroll was passed to Jesus to read the scriptures, he read the scroll from the prophet Isaiah's prophetic words that spoke of his own ministry. In essence, Jesus was letting his hometown folks know that he is the one they've been waiting for. I am the Messiah. As we move into our third and final outline, Jesus closed the scroll and all eyes were upon him. The people were stunned that he would align himself with the words from the, from the prophet Isaiah. Furthermore, Jesus was letting them know that today this scripture is fulfilled in your hearing. 
The scripture goes on to say that they spoke well of him and that the carpenter's son had grown up and could speak with such power. In our Sunday school book, there's a section called Your World. Allow me to share that section with you at this time, which puts this lesson in perspective. It reads, Jesus's ministry was to the poor, homeless, oppressed, the marginalized, those who may be homeless, down on their luck, or victims of injustice. God calls each of us to find ways to serve as Jesus served, touching the lives of those who are often overlooked by others. Beautiful lesson as we move into this new year, looking forward to all that Christ has in store for us. Amen. It is our prayer that you have been blessed as a result of this Sunday School Review. Now let us end this time together with our closing prayer. Lord, anoint us to serve you fully. Give us words to speak and the privilege of sharing your truth and love with those who need you most. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Good morning, College Hill Missionary Baptist Church. For this is the day that the Lord has made. Let us all rejoice and be glad in it. We welcome you uh, this morning to another uh, beautiful Sunday morning service. Of course, this is uh, January 3rd, um, 2021, the first Sunday uh, of the first month of the, of the new year. And so uh, we pray that you all have had a uh, very um, uh, loved and inspired feel uh, Christmas season uh, that we uh, celebrated with our families and friends and uh, that you all had a very Merry Christmas uh, and uh, celebrate uh, the uh, birth of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Uh, so at this time we just simply like to wish you a Happy New Year and pray uh, that this would be a very prosperous year for each and every one of us. We know that God will get the glory uh, the Lord's will will be done in our lives, and we just, just thank him for all of the blessings that he has bestowed upon us. And so once again, Happy New Year. Uh, I'm quite sure that this year would be a blessing to each and every one of us. Having said that, I want to thank uh, Deacon, uh, Deacon um, Lewis Wright for another wonderful review of our Sunday School lesson. Uh, very inspiring. Uh, let us use this lesson uh, to guide our lives and to uh, educate ourselves uh, on how we are to carry ourselves and that God may get the glory. Having said that, uh, this is the first Sunday of a new year. And we know that, uh, that many things happened on last year, but God has safely brought us to this year, and we thank him for that. Um, we ask that you would open up your Bibles at this time to uh, the gospel according to Luke. Luke will claim our attention this morning for the preachment and teachment of our Lord uh, and Savior's word. And we're going to look at the eighth chapter of Luke. And we're going to begin at verse 22. And we're going to conclude at verse 25. That is Luke, the eighth chapter, verse 22 through 25. I'll be reading to you from the King James Version of the Bible. You will find these words. Now it came to pass on a certain day that he went into a ship with his disciples. And he said unto them, let us go over unto the other side of the lake. And they launched forth. And as they sailed, he fell asleep. And there came down a storm of wind on the lake. And they were filled 
with water and were in jeopardy. And they came to him and awoke him, saying, Master, Master, we perish. Then he arose and rebuked the wind and the raging of the water, and they ceased, and there was a calm. And he said unto them, Where is your faith? And they, being afraid, wondered, saying one to another, What manner of man is this? For he commanded even the winds and water, and they obey him. My brothers and sisters in Christ, our key verse for this morning is simply verse 24. And they came to him and awoke him saying, Master, Master, we perish. Then he arose and rebuked the wind and the raging of the water, and they ceased, and there was a calm. May God add a blessing to the reading here and doers of his most holy and righteous word. This morning on the, the first Sunday of, of New Year, 2021, I, I want to talk about uh, or come from this thought, calm down and faith up. Calm down and faith up. Two thousand and twenty has been a year unprecedented in my memory. So many things have happened in 2020 that you would have a hard time writing everything down. So many trials, so many tribulations, so, so many setbacks. So many things that have transpired and happened that you would seem to feel like you were dreaming or, or, or that you were in the twilight zone. There's so many things coming out of left field that it is hard to believe all of these things happened and transpired in one year. Unprecedented. Dealing with a pandemic not just in this country, but in the entire world, unprecedented. Storms coming and going right after each other, unprecedented. But even through the difficulties, even through the uh, unexpected things that happened, even through the pandemic, even through sickness and deaths and uh, social upheaval, even through all of these things that we have witnessed, that we have lived through, uh, that we've gone through, that we have endured, God is still good. And not only is God still good, but God is still in control no matter how bad things have looked. And so, yes, my brothers and sisters, we've gone through storm after storm after storm in the year 2020. But God has allowed many of us to live and to make it and see the first Sunday of 2021. And you, we should not take that for granted. Truly, it is a blessing because if, if God allowed us to live to see another year, that means he still has a purpose for us being here. And so I would simply say this to our brothers and sisters that are still going through trying times, that are still having difficulties. God has not forsaken us. God has not forsaken you. And what God is simply going to say to us in his word this morning is, calm down and faith That brings us to our text this morning. 
Verse 22 simply says, now it came to pass. On a certain day that he went into a ship with his disciples, he said unto them, let us go over unto the other side of the lake. And they launched forth. And so there are four things that I want to talk about this morning. The, the first thing I want to talk about is I want to talk about the calm before the storm. The calm before the storm. Verse 22. <clears throat> On a certain day, Jesus enters the ship with his disciples. They are all together. And he simply says a few words. He said, let us go over unto the other side of the lake. That's all he says. Just a simple sentence about the direction that we're going to go. And then they obeyed the Lord and they launched forth. So here, 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 here's the picture. Uh, the Lord is simply says, we're going to go to the other side of the lake together. We're going to get in this sheep and we're going to sail to the other side and they obeyed. So, so while this is going on, everything is peaceful. Everything is calm. Uh, these, these, these disciples who, who were professional fishermen had, had been on this lake and on the Sea of Galilee many, many, many times. They, they, have, they had already uh, uh, encountered all different kind of storms and they, they, they risked their lives and, 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 and in, the, in the efforts to, to catch fish, or to, do, to bring back and to feed their families and, and their friends and, and to make and, and earn an earnest living. So these were not amateur fishermen. They were professional fishermen. They had been there and they had done that. They had been through storm after storm after storm. And in the very beginning, I, I need to tell you that, that, that there, there's three different kinds of situations that you're going to always find yourself in life, which is the same situations these disciples found themselves. Either you are headed for a storm, you find yourself in the middle of a storm, or you have just been delivered from a storm. Either you're headed for a storm and you may not even see it coming. You're in the midst of a storm right now where you are in life or you have just come out or just being delivered from a storm. Here it is, the calm before the storm. The Lord Jesus and his disciples, they, they're going from one point to another point. He said, let us go over to the other side of the lake. And they obeyed the Lord. They, they launched forth. And so, so everything is, is very peaceful. Everything is very calm. There, there's no need to get upset. There, there's no need to, to panic or, or to get beside themselves. Because after all, they're following their Lord. They're following their master. And they are the 12 disciples. And, and, and he said, we're going to the other side of the lake. They said, okay, we're going with you. And so they launched forth. And so this is the calm before the storm. There may be many of us right now who have a calm. And, and, and a storm may be coming our way. And you may not even see it coming. And some storms you do see it coming. But this is where everything is okay. Everything is peaceful. Everything is quiet. This is the calm before the storm. That's verse 22. The second thing I want to talk about is found in verse 23. The next thing I want to talk about is the calm during the storm. The calm during the storm. Look at verse 23. It says, but as they sailed, he fell asleep. I want to stop right there. The scene is set. They have already launched on this ship and they are sailing from one point to another. And, and, and during their sail, uh, the Lord decided he would lay down and get him a little rest. And, and see, that, that shows us that, 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 that Jesus 
uh, was not only 100% God in the flesh, but he was also 100% man in the flesh. He was human. He got tired just like we did. He, he, he had to lay down and get him some sleep and rest just as we do. Okay? So he, he decided he would lay down and get him some well-deserved sleep. I mean, everywhere Jesus went, people followed him. Okay? Most people were attracted to him, but the disciples were more than just attracted to him. They were attached to him. See, there's a difference from being at attracted to Jesus and being attached to Jesus. There's no salvation in simply being attracted to Jesus, but there's salvation in being attached to Jesus. And so it is, so it is. He, he decides to lay down and get him some sleep while they're Sailing and, 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 and everything is still calm, but all of a sudden, there came down a storm of strong wind on the lake. Pressure, the atmospheric pressure, wind blowing, blowing hard on the lake. And, and when wind hits the water, something happens. The water begins to shift and shake the boat from left to right. The water uh, blows not only what's holding up the boat, which is the water is holding up the boat, but it, it begins to blow water inside of the ship. And so, 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 so those, the, the, came, the wind came down uh, on the lake. And, and as the wind began to come down on the lake, the, uh, the water blew from uh, holding up the boat onto actually getting inside of the boat and filling up this ship with water. And now, as I said, these are professional these are professional fishermen. These are professional sailors. And I'm quite sure they're trying to get as much water out of this boat as they possibly can. But how many of you all know that there's always going to be a point in your life where circumstances and situations are not going to be in our control? And so it was in 2020. There were many things that were simply out of our hands. We could not control it. We did not see it coming. But you had to deal with it. You had to overcome it. And so it is. These, these, the Lord who is asleep in this ship that is filling up with water and 12 disciples trying their best to row and make it to the other side, trying their best to get all of this water that's filling up inside of this ship, and they're getting drenched, okay? They, they're getting wet as, as, as a result because the, the water is coming from everywhere. And so here they are, and they're trying to get this water out of this sinking ship. The, 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 the wind is, is contrary. The water and the waves are contrary. And, and, and their little boat is starting to sink and, 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 and the water is filling up and they become, they find themselves in jeopardy. They find themselves in trouble. And so we talked about the calm before the storm. But there is a calm during the storm. And the calm is not coming from the 12 disciples. The calm during the storm is coming from our Lord and Savior, who is our master and the disciples' master, is coming from a sleeping Jesus. Jesus, the son of the living God, he knew exactly what was going on. He said, well, I may as well lay down and get me some rest because I know what's going to happen. They don't know what's going to happen, but Jesus always knows. God always knows what's going to happen, what is happening, and what is already happening, because God is everywhere at the same time, and nothing surprises him. This is simply a testing of the disciples' faith, and a faith that can't be tested cannot be trusted. And so it is, so it is, the, the Lord is asleep and he's, he's getting some peaceful, hard-earned sleep. And so he is calm even during the storm. But the disciples are not calm at all. They're trying their best, feverishly working to row to get to the other side of this lake, to get through this storm and to get all of this water that's filling up their ship out. 
And so you have, first of all, the calm before the storm. And second of all, you have the calm during the storm as Jesus was getting him some much needed sleep. But the next thing I want to talk about is the calm after the storm. The calm after the storm. Look at verse 24. And they came to him and awoke him, saying, Master, Master, we perish. Then he arose and and rebuked the wind and the raging of the water. And they ceased, they, they stopped. And there was a calm, a C-A-L-M. There was a calm. And so I want to talk about the calm after the storm. The disciples, my brothers and sisters in Christ, were in full panic mode. They feared for their life. The ship was filling up with water. They tried their best, 12 strong professional fishermen and sailors trying to get this water out of the ship, but to no avail. They were soaking wet. The ship was slowly beginning to sink. The storm was in full effect. It was in full destruction mode. They were in full panic mode. These 12 disciples, Peter, James, and John, and the rest of the boys, their fear level was up. Their blood pressure level was up. Their desperation level was up. But their faith level was down and nowhere to be found. I believe that I say that again. These disciples' fear level was up. Their blood pressure level was up. Their desperation level was up. All of these things were up. Jesus is asleep in the boat. They're sinking. But in the very time they needed to exercise their faith, their faith level was down. And not only was their faith level down, it was actually nowhere to be found. And so so, so Jesus calmed the storming winds. He, He rebuked the source of the problem. Because, see, there would be no water getting inside of the boat if the wind wasn't disturbing the water and troubling the water in the first place. And so so I I like what Jesus does. He he does it in a, a systematic way. It's like a domino effect. The wind was blowing on the water, troubling the water, right? And then the water was shaping and and shifting this boat from left to right. And, and, and some of the water was blowing over the sides and getting inside of the ship. And the ship was beginning to sink. And so the Lord, the first thing he does, he, he sees that his 12 disciples are fearful for their lives. They have awakened him out of a peaceful and restful sleep. He sees that they, their faith is nowhere to be found. He sees that their desperation level is up. He sees that their blood pressure level is up. He sees that they are weary, worn, and worn out from struggling to try to get this water out of a sinking ship. He sees that their faith is nowhere to be found. He sees all of this. And so the first thing Jesus does is he, he, he calms the raging wind, the storming wind. Peace be still. And, and then he, he, he commands the raging water to stop shifting the ship like a rag doll. And as he comes, stops the wind from blowing, and as he commands the raging water from filling up the ship, the storm, just like that, was over. 
What am I saying? I'm saying that we're always going to be headed for a storm. We're always going to find ourselves in the midst of a storm, or we're always going to find ourselves uh, coming out of a storm or being delivered of a storm. Storms are just part of life. And so the question is, are you able to stand the storm? Are you able to stand the rain? Are you able to stand the pain? You can do it if you exercise your faith. And so here it is, here it is, the, the calm before the storm and the calm during the storm and the calm after the storm has passed. And here Jesus is. Here Jesus is. He has stopped the raging wind. He has stopped the raging water. And the storm is over. But the last thing I want to talk about is the calming down of the disciples after the storm has passed. In other words, faith up. Look at verse 25. <clears throat> and he said unto them, where is your faith? My brothers and sisters in Christ, I'm going to say it over and over and over and over until we understand what faith is. Faith is a substance of things hoped for. It is the evidence of things not seen. For without faith, it is impossible to please God. That means if you exercise your faith, if you show your faith, if you exercise and show your faith at the very point of your human frailty, at the very point uh, of your human failure, at, at the very point where you are the weakest, that's when God gets the glory. And so, 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 so every day we live, we have got to give God something to work with. We got to show him that we believe in him. We got to show him uh, uh, that, 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 that we are casting all of our cares upon him. In other words, we got to show him every day of our lives that we're going to trust him with all our heart, mind, body, soul, and spirit and not lean unto our own understanding. Because a lot of things that are happening in our lives and especially in storms is only for a short time. The question is, are you willing to show your, and exercise your faith when your money runs out? Are you willing to exercise your faith when your body fails you? Are you, are you willing to exercise your faith when friends fall away from you and leave you by yourself? Are you willing to, to exercise your faith and please God when you lose your job? When you lose your husband or your wife, when you lose your children, when, when, when sometimes it feels like you're about to lose your mind, are you willing to exercise your faith at your very weakest point? That's what it's all about. Because when you do that, that pleases God. That shows God that you not only love him, but that you trust him. And so no matter what storm you are faced with, if you exercise your faith, God will move. If you exercise your faith in him, God will cause any storm you've ever faced to stop and cease and peace be still. And that's exactly what he did for these 12 disciples. And so he asked the question, he asked the disciples, where is your faith at the very time when they needed it the most? They were afraid they were going to die. That's, that's just human nature. All of us get afraid. All of us get weak. N none of us are Superman. God never expects us to be that. But he says, at your, when you are at your weakest, that's really when you're at your strongest. Because what he's saying is, I'm giving you the opportunity to faith up, to increase your faith. He said, you ain't got to have a whole lot of faith. He said, just, if you have faith as the size of a mustard seed, that's enough. What, what are you saying, preacher? I'm saying we have got to learn to give God something he can feel. And he can feel our faith. You got to give God something he can work with. 
And if you just have a small amount of faith, he is able through the circumstances of life to increase your faith and trust and belief and dependency on him. We can't live this life by ourselves. We didn't bring ourselves here and we can't take ourselves out. We are all dependent on God. And so life, no matter what happens in 2021, is all about our faith in God. The calm before the storm. The calm during the storm. The calm after the storm. And, and, and Jesus had to calm his disciples down. He stopped the blowing wind. He stopped the raging water. And he stopped the storm just like that and after that there was a calm and, and, and it came over the 12 disciples and John was looking at Peter and, and, and Peter was looking at James and James was looking at, at, at Matthew and they were all looking at each other they could not believe what had just happened before their very eyes Jesus performed a miracle and it blew their minds. They could not believe it. He controlled the wind. He controlled the water. That means that God has the power and the ability to control any problem, any circumstance, any pandemic, any illness, any situation, any malignancy in our lives at any time. He can stop any storm. But we got to exercise our faith. And so Jesus calms the storm. He increases their faith by doing so. They were afraid they were going to die. And then the Lord calmed them down with his awesome power over nature and he strengthened their faith in him and their faith went way up. And so as we face 2021, all you got to look back at 2020 and see how far God has brought you through the storm, through the rain, through the agony, through the pain, through the anguish, through the upheaval, through the being down and out, through sickness and poor health. All the things that we have faced, God has brought us through them all because God is in control. All I want to tell you is Calm down and increase your faith that it may please God. And in due time, God will bring us through every storm of our life. So just, just, just calm down and faith up. My brothers and sisters in Christ, there may, may be someone out there that's watching this, uh, this sermon and and in hearing God and the Holy Spirit is convicting them in their hearts. They may not know Jesus Christ in the pardon of their sins. And so we want to give you the opportunity right now to come to Jesus. Wherever you are, you could be anywhere right now because God is everywhere. Wherever you are right now, you can come to Jesus just as you are. And you can say, Lord, I want to accept you into my life. I, I, I'm tired of doing things my way. My way. I, 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 want, I want you to accept me. And I want, and I want uh, to give you my life, my body, my soul, my spirit. And I want you to, to, to do your will in my life that you may get the glory. I want to be saved. I'm sick and tired of being sick and tired. I want to be saved. I want to feel your spiritual presence in my life. And I know that when we do that, you will be saved in that very instant that you allow Jesus to come into your heart and give him your life. He will make a difference and he will bring you through every storm in your life. Before we have uh, the issuing of the Lord's Supper, we want to uh, just ask that you would bow your heads as we pray at this time. Father God, we thank you in the name of Jesus for allowing us the opportunity, the blessed assurance and the privilege of living and staying in the land of the living to see a brand new year. 
a year that we've never seen before, but we thank you, Father, because we know that you are all merciful. We know that it is your grace and mercy that leads us every day of our lives, and we just thank you for bringing us through 2020. Some of us didn't know we were going to make it. We were at our wit's end. We, we were sick when we were used to being healthy. We, 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 we were broke when we were used to having a few dollars. We, we, we were uh, confused at the things that were going on all around us in this world. But we know that it's because of you. And so as we look back, we don't have to wonder how we got over. We know how we got over through the grace and mercy of God through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. You have brought us safely through 2020, and we know that you're going to do the same thing in 2021. And so, Father God, we just say thank you for all of the many blessings, for your provisions, of your grace and mercy, and for your, your, your guidance through the Holy Spirit to lead us through every difficulty we face in our lives. We ask all these blessings in Jesus' name we do pray. Amen. God bless you. Have a very, very prosperous new year as we prepare to take the Lord's Supper. Let us prepare to take the Lord's Supper at this time, my brothers and sisters in Christ. For I have received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it. And he said, take, eat. This is my body, which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. Let us partake of our bread at this time. And after the same manner, also he took the cup when he had supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye as oft as you drink it in remembrance of me. Let us take our cups and let us drink. We know that the wine represents his shedded blood. What can wash away our sins? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. We have remembered the Lord and we just thank God for his many blessings upon us and allowing us to see a new year. Let us all, as brothers and sisters in Christ and as Christians all over this land and country and world, hit the ground running for our Lord and Savior. For we know that our day uh, is fastly approaching, and God only knows that day and that hour. But let us always be found pleasing him by showing our faith in him and letting him use us in our everyday lives. Once again, happy, happy new year. And may God bless you with a bright and prosperous 2021. Thank you. <laughs>